take you now to the 2015 Best in Chow Pet Food Show. In Australia, we own a lot of pets, spending around three billion a year on their slob. From the basic, to the extravagant, to this bag of pig snouts. The range out there is almost as vast and varied as our furry friends themselves. There's just one area where our pets are getting a bit samey. You're all fat. Like, crazy fat. Oh no, my self-esteem. Down it goes. So should we be feeding our furry friends stuff like Hill's Prescription Diet, Feline Weight Loss, Low Carbohydrate, Glucose Management? Or is it all a steaming pile of animal byproduct mush and mystery stink juice? Let's meet our first judge, Pafia, or the Pet Food Industry Association of Australia. Pafia members make 98% of pet food sold in Australia, and it is the proud custodian of the pet food industry standard. They not only help develop the rules on pet food labelling, they also regulate them. But Pafia is kind of relaxed. Totally chill. Like in our first category of best in chow, meat. Gourmet beef, grilled chicken, real chicken, tuna salmon soulmates. This is an excellent source of protein. My favourite is protein. The standards say that if a dry food product is named after a type of meat, like beef, the product only needs to contain 20% meat and only 25% of that meat has to be beef, so long as there is more beef than any other type of meat, which means that your beef could be only 5% beef. I've got no beef with that. That's the point. When it comes to wet food, if you want to call it beef, 25% of the meat content has to be beef, and beef has to be the main meat, but there is no minimum percentage for that total meat content. So all we can safely say about this beef pet food is that beef counts for 25% of an unknown fraction of the product. What do you have to say about that, Pafia? <laughs> Embrace the mystery. Next up, we have the qualifying round. Because some words qualify a product to have even less meat in it, like the word dinner, or in fact, any of these words. Tender chicken dinner, savoury seafood entree, ocean fish platter, kitten whitefish feast. Labelling your pet food beef dinner has the same requirements as labelling it beef, only beef doesn't even have to be the main meat ingredient. <gasps> So if the guidelines are anything to go by, this beef dinner is not a beef dinner. What a dog's breakfast! In the bad figurative way, not in the eating way that I like. Another big qualifier is the word with. With Angus beef capsicum and green beans. With beef mince. With chicken and veal casserole. A dry product with beef only has to have as little as 5% beef, but does not need to have any other meat whatsoever and it can also have higher quantities of other meat not mentioned in the name of the product. So this dog food with beef could be 5% beef and 15% chicken, or it could be 5% beef and 95% rice. Yes! Rice is carb loading! Yes! So 5% doesn't sound like a lot of meat, but it is better than the guidelines for wet food, where there is no specified limit to how little meat it can have. Where's the beef? Now, these two beneficial products, Healthy Weight with Chicken and Complete Health with Beef, could have exactly the same ingredients. We don't know if they do, but the vague list of ingredients on both of them are identical. So, if two packets with different names can have the same lists of ingredients, how is that accurate and not misleading, like the Pafia guidelines should ensure? This is really one for our other judge, philosopher Renee Descat. I don't think, therefore I am kept. Thank you, Renee. And at the end of the qualifying round, everyone qualifies. <laughs> thanks to the needlessly complicated and yet perplexingly relaxed guidelines. What about halal pet food? Shut up, Cat Stevens. So we now know that Pafia doesn't require meaty products to have very much meat in them. But what does meat even mean? Let's find out in our next round, meat byproducts. <laughs> Firstly, when it comes to horse meat, Pafia say... <laughs> That's right. They say no to horse, dolphin or whale meat. No whale meat? Excellent choice. Boo! But things get a little 
laxa from there. According to Perfia, meat could mean any part of the animal that includes protein, which could include blood or entrails. Hey, I'm a cat. I'll eat anything. But if a product says it includes byproducts, that could include parts of the animal that don't even contain protein. Oh, an absence of protein is my least favourite. <laughs> what about beaks? Who knows? The guidelines don't define byproducts at all. Oh no, the beaks! So we know this is gross, but is it bad? Let's ask animal nutritionist Dr. Wendy Brown, spokescat. Spokescat, are byproducts bad or just disgusting? Byproducts are generally lower quality and the nutrients are harder for the animal to digest, such as bone, fatty tissue and blood. Thanks, spokescat. I'm going to vomit. And now a message from our sponsors. Intense beauty and age-defying to fight the four signs of ageing. Pet food that thinks it's a skin cream. Next up, our sponsor's favourite round. Vague claims. Isle of Dogs Natural Chill Out. Science Diet Hairball Control Light. Kitten Wholesome Essentials Chicken. Like this Hills Kitten Healthy Development Original, which claims to help build immunity and digestive health. We asked Hills how this product promotes healthy development in kittens, as well as building immunity and digestive health, and they told us that it contains gentle fibres. Spokescat, what is a gentle fibre? There is no such thing. Your pets don't need magical food ingredients. They just need a balanced diet and plenty of exercise. But Hills aren't alone. There are a lot of words that appear on pet food labels that are basically meaningless, like science or diet or prescription. Oh wait, they're all Hills. But it really is a tight race to the bottom with Vetologica's daily tranquil treats using something they made up called Karmafan technology to help maintain emotional balance in dogs. It's also called a daily treat. And the word treat in the guidelines means... Not nutritionally complete. So, Spokescat, how often should we feed our animals treats? Rarely. What about daily treats? Rarely. Same goes for words like snack, complementary and supplement, like these tuna slices in light jus. Even though they're called a meal, they're actually intended for occasional use. Twelve? Mmm. I guess jus is French for gelling agents. Same goes for dine succulent chicken breast. If you want a proper nutritious meal for your pet, avoid words like treat, supplemental and occasional. But if you want to buy a product that has everything your special friend actually needs, just look for nutritionally complete and balanced on the label. That means it has all the normal nutritional requirements for a healthy pet. But if I only eat complete and balanced food, then why am I still fat? Spokescat? Animal obesity is largely a problem of overfeeding. Ooh. It's the human's fault! Kill all the humans! That's for making me fat, Janet. <laughs> <laughs>